Yeah, pizza and beer, I, I think is, is a, a good standard fun thing. I'm, I'm all for pizza and beer. So anyway, uh, that, I've got other stuff, but I don't want uh, to engage in a monologue here. Um, did I, it was a guy I asked first, right? All right, so guys, all put your hands down. Uh, it's a lady's turn. Uh, uh, this is always the hardest part, is choosing people. Um, uh, the young lady in the white, uh, yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, but you need a microphone. Here it comes. Here it comes. Mr. President, I wish a great success for the Obama Foundation. I'm a transgender woman. My name is Dr. Akai Padmashali. I was a sex worker. I was a beggar. I was rejected by all the sections of society. And I'm the black beauty. And I love you. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Mr. President, I have so many issues to bring before you as a social activist, founder of Pundere. I was not able to come here today from, ba from Bangalore, Karnataka to Delhi because I was facing so much a financial crisis. Did not have money to travel here. I need to thank change.org for getting me here. Okay. The issue is, the two things I want to bring, one is the question, one is a request. The question is, when the state terror is against minorities, be it a transgender, be it a sexual minority, be it a class, caste, religious, race minority, when you are being stigmatized, you are being discriminated because nowhere of your reason, and the patriarchal notion and the power is dominating against you, and I want to take my strong objection on it. Right? Like the recent, like how do I speak? I'm a criminal before the section 377, which criminalizes because you are a transgender, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and how do I raise my voice against this? The second thing is about the Transgender Protection Rights Bill, where the government is not in a consultative, democratic, transparent way of discussing what exactly the community wants and not the government wants. If that's so, how do I raise my voice? How do I fight against it? That is my question to you. How do I resolve the world crisis? I think across the world, we as sexual minorities, as transgender, facing social dejection, you know, like negligent uh, way attitude. We are seeking for love, Affection, acceptance, that is my question to you. How do I deal with that? My request. My request. My request. Can I hug you? That's it. Well, we can, we can have a hug after the event's over. Because the, uh, uh, otherwise I'll start, uh, you know. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of hugging and I won't be answering any questions. Uh, but, you know, it, it, um, I can't speak to the specifics of legislation in, in India because uh, I'm not qualified. I have not been uh, keeping pace with exactly what's happening uh, in, in the parliament around these kinds of issues. Uh, but I can answer your, your more general question. Um, and, and I think the, the, the answer is uh, it begins with what uh, you just did, which is to to find your voice and to be able to, to articulate uh, your views and your experiences and tell your story. And that's true of, of, of uh, any group that is marginalized, stigmatized. Finding that voice uh, and being able to, to, to tell a story so that um, the perceptions that somehow you are different are broken down because people start recognizing their own experiences in you. They see your humanity, right? So, uh, you know, th this is one of the reasons, by the way, by the way, why art is often often a powerful tool in social change, because what it does is, through art, suddenly people see for the first time, oh, that uh, black person feels like I feel. Or that woman is experiencing something that I should be able to understand. There's something we have in common. Or uh, that person of what has been considered an inferior caste 
Turns out they have the same kinds of hopes and dreams that I have, right? That moment of recognition is the basis around which you begin to build political movements. Um, once you, that voice is there, hopefully others join you, right? And so now you have networks and organizations and allies. And one of the things that I think is important uh, in, in terms of any effort to, to bring about positive change is thinking about uh, the, the allies that you are, uh, that are available to you. Uh, your issue may be climate change, or your issue may be gender equality, or your issue may be uh, public health. But the question then sometimes is, can you find uh, the intersection between those issues? Is there a way, if you're working on public health, to engage with environmental activists because it may be that uh, improving air quality is a key public health issue, but it's also a key environmental issue. If you're a transgender person and you're seeking uh, you know, to, to be recognized and have full equality, well, you need to be speaking with women's groups generally who are concerned about sexual assault, right? And so forth and so on. So finding those alliances, I think, then become important. Um, and then, once that happens, it's a matter of applying political pressure and, uh, and, and being able to mobilize public opinion. Um, and that's going to take some time. It's what we just talked about earlier in terms of uh, how we can get uh, discouraged sometimes because progress does take some time. But you should take some measure of hope by just looking at what's happened um, in the United States and in a lot of other countries around uh, LGBT issues generally. I, I, again, I, I'd like to think I'm not that old, even though, you know, my, my hair is a little gray. Um, but Michelle thinks I'm still cute, she says. <laughs> but, but um, you know, you know, when, when, I, when, I was in, when I was in college, so this would be back in uh, the early 80s, uh, it was just beginning uh, for uh, persons who were openly uh, gay or lesbian to have student organizations. Um, the laws on the books were still discriminatory across many states uh, in, uh, in the United States. And so now the, there is a just an open uh, acknowledgement even among many conservative parties that we should not be discriminating against persons because of sexual orientation. And that happened, you know, with respect to human history, amazingly quickly, right? In the, in the span of, of 20 years, basically. Now, in the span of one person's lifetime, that can seem painfully long. Um, but, uh, but it requires a steady education of the public. Uh, and then a political strategy that uh, puts pressure on elected officials, and that's going to take some time. Uh, yes, sir, right here. Let's get a microphone. And then we'll go to an internet question, online question. Uh, sir, I'm Nipun Malhotra. I'm a disability rights activist, and I run the Nepan Foundation. Uh, you're spending a lot of your time post-presidency on mentoring young change makers. Yeah. What is the role of mentors in your life? You know, it's an interesting, it, it's an interesting question. I, um, I think part of the reason that I, I, I consider this very important, uh, the, the idea of, um, of mentoring, uh, is that in some ways I didn't have as many mentors as I probably would have liked when I was coming up. 
Um, my father left when I was very young, so I didn't know him. Um, my grandparents, my grandfather, my gr grandmother helped my mother raise me, and, and they gave me all kinds of love and support. But uh, and, and I had a stepfather uh, who I lived with for five years, uh, all, all of whom were very kind, good people. But uh, I can't say that I had somebody who took me under their wing and kind of groomed me. I, I had to kind of figure a lot of stuff out on my own, uh, which is part of the reason why I was parting for, from the age of 15 to, to, to 20. Um, and and I, so I think it's, in, it's the absence uh, in some ways of mentors when I was young that makes me appreciate how valuable they were. Now, as I got older, I began to meet certain key people in my life who uh, I think gave me ideas, gave me direction. Um, but it wasn't very systematic. Uh, and w what I've discovered as I became more successful was that uh, my ability to have an impact on people uh, just by paying attention to them and giving them some advice and giving them some counsel and, and helping them learn from mistakes I had already made, uh, they found incredibly powerful. Uh, and I realized I would have also if I had had figures uh, like that in, in my life. Um, and, and so part of what we've done is we've, we've tried to systematize this. You know, when we were in the White House, Michelle and I both uh, would take on uh, mentees, uh, kids from underprivileged areas, and I'll, I'll use Michelle as, as an example actually because uh, I, what she did was wonderful. She, she would take a group of, let's say, 20 young women. These were all from poor s schools, uh, uh, mostly uh, African American and, and, uh, and Latino. And uh, you know, she would meet with them. She would like host a tea at the White House with them. She would take them to, to meet with college counselors to talk about how they could potentially get to school. All told, probably over the course of a year, if you added it all up, she probably didn't spend personally more than eight hours with them. But what she was also able to do then was assign somebody from her staff to each individual person to mentor them. And if you added it all up, those young women would say that it was one of the most powerful things that had ever happened to them and had been tr changed the trajectory of their life. But it, it was with a relatively small investment. So it goes back to the question earlier about technology, the power of technology, how you leverage it. Mentoring is similar in the sense that you can, you can leverage a few hours into something very powerful uh, that, that can give a, give a boost to a young person. Um, and, and all of you are in a position already if you're sitting here, that means you've already succeeded in doing some amazing things. You're already in a position to mentor somebody behind you uh, in a way that would be transformative for them. And it wouldn't take that much time. And so if you just then think about that, you multiply that, uh, uh, you know, the, the impact of that can be uh, profound uh, and, and powerful. Go ahead.